Welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist, which, as we know, is kind of a euphemism for bartender. But hopefully, again, we're redefining bartending a bit in the, in the sense that we're being a bit more innovative, a bit more creative, and doing things that we shouldn't be afraid of doing. And as, as I've mentioned before, the inspiration of others is always good. If some of our drinks are derivative in that we've copied them from other people and added our own flourishes or taken traditional recipes and added to them, that's good. Again, as long as it doesn't get too esoteric and peculiar and we're doing things that actually don't blend with the base liquor. It's kind of like cooking. Certain ingredients marry beautifully, others do not. It may sound really clever and really esoteric and innovative to do certain things with a dish that we're cooking, but if it's not palatable and not good, we've defeated the whole purpose. And today, we're gonna basically make a tequila-based drink that's a bit different from your stereotypical tequila-based drinks. Either fortunately or unfortunately, we tend to get served lots of margarita variants, which are good. And of course, there's the ubiquitous tequila sunrise, which people got a bit bored with, and with good reason, because we're talking, you know, tequila, orange juice, and grenadine. Not particularly creative or innovative if you don't go beyond the box a bit. And again, we're going to make something that's akin to a certain degree to a tequila sunrise, but a bit different, and that we incorporate something from the hurricane, which is the drink of New Orleans and Mardi Gras. And of course, the hurricane was pioneered and made immensely popular by Pat O'Brien's. And it's usually served in a hurricane glass, you know, which is a large pedestal type glass. But we're going to serve this particular drink, which again is a, well, it could be defined as a tequila sunrise variant, but much better. And again, I'm going to use the shaker as a medium for blending the ingredients, although you could simply use the glass exclusively but we're going to do it a bit differently. I'm going to go ahead and add the ice at this point, and I did add a bit of simple syrup to the bottom of the shaker. And normally I wouldn't do that because normally you would use grenadine, but I'm not using grenadine, so we need a hint of sweetness, but not cloying. So I'm going to add some ice right now. And I added just enough ice that we can get the ingredients nice and cold. And next we're going to do the, the tequila. And again, as I lecture endlessly, if you're going to make cocktails, you don't have to use top shelf ingredients. But it is necessary that we use fresh ingredients for the rest of the drink. If you want to use top shelf liquor, it's really meant for sipping not for making cocktails, so we're going to use a very modest tequila. And again, the off-base ingredient that we're going to use is passion fruit infusion. And you may think, well, that's kind of weird with tequila. Actually, it's not. It really turns out good. It just adds an extra dimension to this drink, which normally would be classified as a tequila sunrise. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to add orange. And again, I'm using this knife that looks absolutely brutal. I was kidding with some of the friends here in the studio that I'll appear on forensic files if I continue to use this knife here. It looks absolutely lethal. And we're going to squeeze the orange into this drink. And we're going to add some lime, which is necessary, too. And again, that's not typically used in a so-called tequila sunrise, but this drink is different. This is what we would do if it was a hurricane. 
And although it is not, these ingredients blend beautifully together. And again, we're making sure that we get that infusion from the peel, from both the orange and the lime. And this is also a departure from tradition. And we're going to add a bit of pineapple juice, which normally is not done with tequila-based drinks. But it actually goes very nicely with this particular cocktail. So we're going to add just a hint, a splash, really, of pineapple juice. And then we're going to go ahead and fill our glass with ice before we shake and divest it into the chimney glass. Yeah, this makes our drink nice and cold. And again, the fact that we're shaking it makes it easier to blend the ingredients, I think. Again, you don't have to do this particular step. I like to do it myself, but you don't absolutely have to. You could make it all up in the chimney glass, but I like to do it this way. We're going to go ahead and pour it in. And you could use, you know, the filter part if you want to, but I choose not to. Try to pour it in carefully. And then we're going to do the additional step, as I've done before, of adding blood orange. Because blood orange not only has a unique flavor, but it also adds a certain beauty to the drink. So we're going to do that and watch that lovely, gradual infusion of the blood orange. And this way you're getting the beauty that you would normally get with grenadine, but you're not using grenadine. And again, just look at that. That is so pretty, just like a tequila sunrise, because that's one of the selling points about tequila sunrises is the beauty of the drink. So we're going to go ahead and try this out and see if it lives up to the so-called hype. Oh, that is truly lovely. Again, you would never think that passion fruit infusion and tequila would go together, but they do. I mean, this makes an equally lovely drink as um, a hurricane. It's different, and it doesn't have the complexity but it's very good. And I neglected to do a garnish. We're going to do a bit of orange peel and just the peel, the zest, and a little tiny wedge of lime in there. And again, this is a lovely drink, a refreshing drink that you can have any time of the year, but especially when the weather is warm. You know, outdoor parties lend themselves to these particular drinks. So again, think beyond the box. Do things that are out of the realm of average. And again, I'm not pretending to be like some mixologists and growing herbs and making my own homemade infusions. You don't have to do that, although I think it's a wonderful idea, and we're going to experiment with those sort of things on future shows. But for today, that's going to be it. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. And again, drink responsibly, show respect for our community, respect for other people. Enjoy your cocktails, but be safety conscious. Thank you again. My name is Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. Goodbye.